It is the Martha Zoller Show, and we're going to talk a lot more about um, what is happening related to the Georgia legislature, the border, all of that sort of stuff. But we wanted to get an update this morning with Dove Wilker uh, from the American Jewish Committee, the other AJC, AJC Global. <laughs> you can fi- follow them all over the place because a lot has happened. A couple of more hostages have been released. There's this kind of mixed messaging coming out of the White House, and there's a lot of things happening related to the war uh, and also on the home front. And in a way, this is part of the home front because we're being attacked as well as, uh, you know, United States interests are being attacked as well as Israeli interests. So there's a lot of common interest here. And I wanted to welcome Dove Wilker back. Dove, thank you so much for being with me today. Of course, Martha. Thank you so much for having me. So we, since we last talked, we have passed in Georgia the uh, Anti-Semitism Prevention Act. I know that's not the actual name, but that's what it really is. It yeah. codified a definition of anti-Semitism uh, in the hate crime bill and, and did, a, did some good work there. Are we seeing a settling down, not only in Georgia, but across the country, of some of the anti-Semitic uh, activity that we were seeing right after mm-hmm. October 7th? You know, un- unfortunately, Martha, we are not. Uh, anti-Semitism continues to be on the rise. Uh, while these laws are important, they're, they're not preventing anti-Semitism from occurring. And in fact, because of the opposition to the bill, I, I think it's fair to say that we are seeing more vocal uh, anti-Semitism, especially in terms of the anti-Zionism that we are seeing, because many people feel that it was uh, an infringement on their free speech rights. So they are demonstrating ways in which it is actually not limiting uh, their uh, impact. But yesterday, American Jewish Committee released our 2023 State of Anti-Semitism report, which was released just around October 7th. So we initially released the report on October, the survey on October 5th. Because of October 7th, it took a pause. And then on October 17th, it was launched again. And the key finding of that, there are two key findings. Number one, 63% of American Jews feel less secure in the United States today than they did uh, in previous years. It was about 42% in 2022 and 31% in 2021. So we're seeing a, a essentially a 100% increase of the, the fear and the less secure of the Jewish community. And then the second one is that 46% of American Jews are changing their behavior for fear of anti-Semitism. And that, to me, is almost more damning and concerning uh, because that is how we demonstrate our Jewishness. And so with this rise, of unprecedented rise of anti-Semitism, we are continuing uh, to feel the effects of it across North America. You know, I was driving home. Uh, I went to Mardi Gras this weekend and met up with my family down there. We had a great time. And we were driving home um, on Monday. And as we were getting on to 985, this truck comes up kind of a couple lanes on the side. And it had an Israeli flag with a big red X through the middle of it in a circle. And Mm. then a bunch of Palestinian... uh, and they and I don't even want to call it pro-Palestinian, but that's what they thought they were was pro-Palestinian, and it was very unsettling to me. I'm not Jewish, but it was unsettling to me that somebody would be doing that, in in the same way when I see, you know, somebody driving down the road with things hanging off the back of their truck that are that are offensive in other ways. So yep. uh, it's a problem that we are seeing, and and I understand because. You know, my husband wanted to make a gesture towards the guy, and I will admit to you, I said, don't, no, don't do anything, because we don't really want to have a problem. I'll admit to you that I, that was my reaction. Yeah, look, you know, Martin, it's not surprising. I mean, it's part of the challenge, you're absolutely right, that these are, people are not pro-Palestinian, right? They are anti-Israel. And that's a very important distinction that we make, because if they were pro-Palestinian, what they would be calling for is the release of the hostages. And, in fact, on the Super Bowl, during the Super Bowl, Israel completed a mission, and they were able to secure uh, two hostages that were being held. And the report that came out was, in fact, that they weren't being held by Hamas. They were being held by citizens of Gaza. Now, I can't decide what's worse, the fact that they were 
weren't being held by Hamas, but by regular citizens, or the fact that it's even a question of like what Israel is doing and why they're doing it. There are still 134 hostages being held in Gaza today, and I think we are on day 130 since the war began. Well, and, and so I would we, I I would yeah. encourage folks to dove is there's some good stories that are being posted now of hostages mm-hmm. that have been released that are telling their yep. stories about what happened to mm-hmm. them. And there there are several of them that I'm not, obviously I'm focused on, I focus on some of the horrific stories they're telling, but I'm also noticing that they are being, many of them were held in the general population. Okay, this yep. this idea that they were all being held underground in these Hamas tunnels, some of them were, definitely, but that right. there are, I don't even want to call them average people, but there are people who are living in Gaza who were keeping these hostages in apartments. And there are people who are living in Gaza that when hostages were trying to escape, they were catching them and giving them back to Hamas. So Mm -hmm. in, in my view, every time I see something that is, I think, you know, some kind of attack on Israel, I my response is demand the release of the hostages and that Hamas surrender and all of this will be over because they started it. I had someone try to engage me, Dove, with this convoluted and I've seen this sadly at city hall meetings across the country in all mm-hmm. kinds of places where someone was trying to convince me that the Israeli government and the IDF had actually attacked the Nova Music Festival and they wanted to make oh. it look like Hamas did it. That is, mm. that is, there are crazy people out there that are, that that's what yeah. they believe. And yeah. well, I don't you, know how you but, fight you know, Mark, that. Well, look, it's, it's hard, right, especially with so much misinformation going around, but I'll share two stories. The first is I was in Israel, I just got back about a week ago, and we went to the site of that Nova Music Festival massacre, this beautiful, serene uh, park in Israel that is now a site of a massacre. And really, it reminded me of when I visited Poland uh, in the May of 2000, and I traveled. We were some random place in Poland, and we the bus pulled off to the side of the road, and they took us to the middle of the forest, and they said, in this forest, a massacre took place. And it was uh, to think that people were denying how these massacres took place is astonishing to me. And it just demonstrates the importance of our continuing education around the Holocaust and around how and why Israel exists. Um, so that's, that's number one. Number two, uh, the Atlanta Jewish Film Festival just opened last night. And it's a, a three-week-long festival that goes from February 13th to the 27th and then virtually from the 27th through March 7th. And on Sunday, February 18th, there's two screenings of a documentary that was created about the music festival. The music festival took place on October 7th, and the filmmakers have already been able to put together, because of all of the firsthand footage from the Hamas goros and the, the survivor cell phones, and even those who, cell phones of those who perished, they were able to put together a documentary about the music festival and what took place. And so I encourage all of your listeners to consider checking out the Atlanta Jewish Film Festival and seeing that film in particular, but other films uh, that are about uh, what's going on in Israel today. How is the security around that event? Uh, Security is very high at every Jewish institution across the United States. Uh, You cannot go to a Jewish institution without seeing uniformed uh, security at the doors to let you in. Well, Dove, we're going to continue uh, talking about this tomorrow. I am going to be recording an interview with a uh, a Jewish woman who's originally from Oregon, but who is uh, found herself giving tours of some of the Hamas tunnels that have been uh, discovered back in 2014. Wow. This is this is when mm. she was doing this. But we're going to talk to her about her experiences, and we'll be playing that for our listeners. I am not going to let this story go, Dove. Um, it Thank is you. important that we, as Americans, and especially on this Ash Wednesday, as Christians, to mm. to remember these these issues and not to forget these hostages 
not to forget the people who died. I mean, the beautiful right. young faces, they're hard to look at, but they should be hard mm-hmm. to look at because we should not yeah. allow this. Uh, you know, when the, right. when the president on Thursday night made this ridiculous comment about how Israel's response was over the top, um, yeah. I was so disappointed because, you know, that wasn't a scripted thing. It was just something he said. He's bowing to pressure yeah. from a small minority of people. And it's not about what's political. It's about what's right. And That's and right. I'm going to always try to be on the side of right. Well, thank you very much, Martha. You know, we appreciate your support and you're continuing to raise awareness about this. Uh, you know, every the, the key t- my key takeaway from being in Israel was every day to remind myself and everybody else what day we are at since October 7th and how many hostages. So we are at day 130, and there are still 134 hostages being held captive in Gaza uh, by the people, by Hamas. So anything that we can continue to do to raise awareness about that, I'm greatly appreciative for. Dove Wilker, thank you so much for being with us today.